Hey guys, Sean Bougie here, SurplusFundsRiches.net. Those of you guys that know us, SurplusFundsRiches.net. And please, like this channel, follow this channel, the YouTube channel. Subscribe. Um, you'll get a lot of more information uh, that will be helpful to you, both with flipping property and with overage retrieval, which we've done both for almost two de decades now. I know we've flipped property since, well, over 20 years, but we've been doing overages uh, for really close to 20 years now. We're the old guys on the block. Our system's a little different. Um, we take a little more risk, but the return is there for us. Now, what I want to talk about today is I had an interesting comment on a video I put out on a new program that I'm considering launching in the next couple of months. And it was talking about the upside of buying property going into tax sale uh, prior to the auction hitting, not doing it at the, at the auction but buying it from the owner right before paying off the debt that's against the property, either tax or mortgage, but tax is generally a little easier. Tax sale, tax deed sales are easier. Doing that in lieu of doing tax lien investing, which can have a really good return, but which has, and I've done two videos on tax lien investing and the downside of what they're not telling you. Um, it can have a really good return, but nothing like flipping the property. And the new program was we were going to let the people stay in the pro property for a year, pay off their taxes or whatever debts against it, taxes usually, um, pay that off, let them stay in the property for free for a year, and then turn around and sell it. And I got not a whole lot, but a little bit of blowback for that. People said, one person said, and I left the comment up on that video, said, I, I couldn't sleep if I do this. I feel like I'm taking advantage of people. Okay, I'm not going to go into a diatribe like Michael Douglas on the movie Wall Street where greed is good. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to say is this, because I think a lot of people that are considering being an entrepreneur and getting involved in either one of our flip programs or our overage recovery programs, they have hearts of gold. And I think it's great. They do want to help people. And guys, you do. You help people. Overage recovery, they didn't know the money was there. They don't know how to go about getting it, and you can help them get out of a rough situation. Real quick aside, I'm going to give you a story. We found a girl that, I don't know how we even found this young lady. I say girl because I'm in the South. No disrespect. We found a young lady that uh, was due quite a bit, a uh, very large overage, we made a deal with her. We found her, she was literally uh, alternating between her car and staying in, um, oh good Lord, what was she staying in? Uh, shelters uh, on occasion. And we got her some money up front. That's the way we do a rich retrieval. We give them 10% of the gross amount being held by the court within a week after they sign, and then more money later. We actually had to do it different too. We gave her a, a money order instead of a check because she was in between banks. It was just a bizarre thing. Now that young lady, she went out. She took the money that she made from the retrieval. She was able to fix her car. She was able to buy clothes so that she could interview get a nicer phone so she could actually do online applications, get a nice job, and also became a mobile notary, which pays extremely well in Florida, which is where she was located, became a mobile notary, and we actually use her for literally probably 30, 40% of our deals in Florida, and actually pay her a little higher than we pay most mobile notaries. She's been around forever, and it benefits both of us. First of all, she's extremely thankful for us helping us. She gets that we needed to make profit so that we could pay our crew, so that we could find her, so that we could call her, try mailing her, get in touch with her, hire the attorney, and take the risk. And there is some risk involved, guys, with overage retrieval, and I'll get to that in a second. But she knew all that, was very thankful, so she's, of course, the greatest person we can have as a mobile notary, right? She's a testimonial. She's going. She's telling people when she meets them, look, I did this, and this is how I came out. So, of course, it worked out great. And, yes, you can help people, okay? But you are also taking a risk, and you have to defray that risk by making enough profit so that on the deals where you don't make profit, you're still going to be okay, all right? Seriously, a lot of you guys are entrepreneurs, and you don't understand that. There needs to be profit. You need to put money up like cordwood for the rough days because occasionally there are some rough days or occasionally, you know what? The bear eats you. You don't eat the bear, right? So, and let me give you one quick example of uh, something that happened to us where there was, we had two things happen. 
I mean, overages. We've had a bunch of stuff happen to deed flips too, but in overages, there were two things. Of course, we take that risk. We give them 10% of the gross amount being held within a week after they sign, after our attorneys double check title and knows the money's still there. That's when we pay them. Um, the, the 10%. And then we give them the rest, guys, 40, 50 more percent down the road. I'm paying attorneys well. I pay them 10% of the gross. I pay my researchers anywhere from 8 to 16%. You can become a researcher or a partner with us, depending on the program you buy for 8 to 16% of the gross at surplusfundsriches.net. You can go there, see the programs we have, click on products, go to the bottom. It'll give you an overview of how we do it. Same thing with flips. But we had two things happen with overage recovery. One, we had, we saw nothing. The attorney did the title work, made sure there was an additional debt against the individual or the house prior to the sale. Everything looked good. Went to make the claim. In between when he checked and when the claim was actually in front of the clerk at that point, in between that time period, a judgment that had been against that individual in another county once was transcribed. That means that it was basically copied into the county where we were. And the county allowed it. A lot of times they don't. That's kind of a crapshoot for these guys. The county transcribed it. Now we had a creditor that was entitled to the vast majority of that overage prior to uh, the claim being made. We moved quick. Just so happened it worked out that way. Okay. We've also had where uh, the individual went behind us, even though we had an attorney, hired another attorney. Our attorney got on the docket. Their attorney got happened to get on the docket a week beforehand. They got the money out. When our attorney arrives, it's gone. Now, I have set ways in the, in the contract to retrieve that money from the owner, and we did end up getting our money back, our 10% back plus all attorney fees from the individual uh, because that's in our agreement. And we, we do pursue that, you know, we do. Because as far as I'm concerned, guys, I'm 55 years old. When I grew up, a handshake was your bond, okay? Your word meant something. So in my world, if somebody doesn't act that way, I'm going to use the ability to get the money back. I'm just going to do that. D flips, we've had issues happen too. Some things happen where we take risks, guys. And look, every time I take a D flip, it's a risk. The house, and this happened to me, the house could burn down in between when I buy it and insurance isn't on it. It could be literally a one day delay, which happened to me, and the house burned down. This That one actually worked in my favor. We had a mobile home in Florida actually get, it is mobile, taken away and I got a call from uh, a sheriff in Texas where they were moving it from Florida uh, to Texas, going to sell it in Mexico and apparently that's pretty common in Florida. Didn't know that until that happened. I've had bizarre stuff like that happen. So you do take risk, guys. You do take risk. So you need to understand, regardless of how you structure your business, you take risk. So you need to understand, okay, that people do crazy stuff crazy stuff. I had somebody burn down a house I owned. Okay. Luckily that house was one I was going to demo and put a mobile home on. <laughs> so they saved me some money. <laughs> um, and that's an interesting story in and of itself. Again, I had a mobile home actually taken from the property. Okay. I had that happen. I've had, I found out later, even though we had pictures of the interior and everything was looked fine. I've had a house where the people actually had a, I found out later had a hole in their uh, floor going into their crawl space and that hole was where they were going to the bathroom in their crawl space can't resell that house i've had where a house was not only somebody came in as a squatter but they were cooking meth i don't deal with that guys i just get rid of the house uh, in that case i literally got in touch with the city and made an agreement where they would uh, demo it i'd give them the house they demo it and take care of it um, luckily, it was during during a time when that was common, and the cities and counties wanted to take care of that. So that was that worked out that it, I didn't get any money back, but I had didn't have to deal with that. My point in all this is, when you're looking at this and you want to help people, you also have to build in profit. And again, I'm not going to do the Michael Douglas greed is good. I'm not doing that conversation with you. It's not about greed. It's about being able to meet your bills. I am responsible as an employer, okay, of part-time people that depend on me to make their bills. I am responsible to make enough profit that I can pay them. And I have had weeks in the past 
where I have paced the floor, not slept. All of that because we're in a weird position. Look, here's the thing that no one's going to tell you. If you're in this business, if you want to get into flipping or if you want to get into overage recovery, if it's not me, buy somebody else's program that really knows what the hell they're doing, okay, and they're good at it, and they're willing to walk you through by the hand. The reason is this, particularly in deed flips, where the upside is crazy high, but the downside is too, and there's no such thing as a cheap lesson flipping property. Trust me. Here's the deal. If I make one bad deal, I'm good. If I make two bad deals in a row, I put myself in a rougher position, but I'm still good. Okay, because I've got enough cash flow coming in off of other things that I'm okay. If I make three in a row, I'm going to be pacing. Three, if I buy three large deed flip deals in a row that fall apart, I am going to be pacing. It's that simple. Now, I can make other deals happen because we have a system that actually works. I can make other deals happen and cover my loss and do it quickly. Not everybody can do that. Some people are in such a, a shoestring, they can't. They can't survive two losses in a row. That's why people partner with us. And that's why people make enough per deal, okay? They make enough per deal that they can get to the next one and make all their, cover all their costs and make a little bit of profit and put some money up. That's what people do. I have had deed flips where I literally broke even. I, they're extremely rare now because we're really damn good at what we do. But I've also had one where it was a bizarre setup in Durham, North Carolina. I'll never forget it. And she was going into tax sale, had zero debt against the property other than the taxes. Um, it was before the market got super hot, so it could have been worth 120, it could have been worth 180. We weren't sure. There was a lot on the market when we were first talking to her, quite a few on the market. It was a four bedroom. The master was on the main, but it had been converted to her son for his health problems where the master bath was kind of really screwed up. I thought I was going to have to tear out. This is back when I fixed and flipped a lot. I thought I was going to have to tear off the wall between the master bath and the uh, office area, create a new wall and expand that whole thing because the master upstairs didn't have a bath. It was really funky. I ended up just really maxing out the bath, maxing out the, uh, maxing out the kitchen and we luckily found a buyer that liked the setup because she was going to have her mother live with her on the first floor in that master and she could be up in the secondary master upstairs and use the hall bath. Just got lucky with a buyer. Had 40 into the owner, um, 40 and 20 actually, 40 into the owner, no, 40 into the owner, 10 into taxes, and then another 50 in fix up. Had 100,000 in the house and we sold it for 200. Home run. I had no idea I was going to be able to pull that off. I got lucky with the buyer took a risk. There's people out there that will give me a hard time about that. And I've seen this for, for instance, if you go on YouTube and you check out the Pawn Stars videos that are on there, I've literally seen where Rick makes a deal and he goes, I, my, my pro isn't here. I really don't know what the value, very much like my Durham house, really don't know what the value on this is going to be. Could be great, could be low, not sure, taking a risk. Here's your five grand. And then they find out from a pro later that thing's worth $50,000. And then people comment and go, well, they should have called that guy back and said, hey, um, I owe you more money because I got it too cheap. What about all the deals that Rick didn't make money on? Should he be able to go back back to the seller and go, hey, lost money on that deal. You owe me some more money. No. So you got to get into the right frame of mind. You're not taking advantage of people by any means. In fact, when the pandemic hit, Jeff and I had a really long conversation and the conversation basically got summarized into this. Look, more people are home and everybody's broke. We're going to be able to put more deals together, right? We're not going to offer them any less than they would have prior to the pandemic. We're still going to make great money. They're going to do good. It's a win-win. Let's do this. Let's not try to take advantage of the situation. So we're not taking advantage of people. And that new program I talked about, um, we're not taking advantage of people. There are people that would have, especially in a tax deed sale where it's not a tax lien, they would have lost their house probably in a week or two and been on the street, I'm going to let them live there for free. This is what the new program that we're going to launch. I'm going to let them live there for free for a year just by paying off their taxes. Usually it's going to be a tax deal uh, in tax deed sale. Instead of buying, instead of paying off the taxes and getting taxing and getting a 15% return, I'm going to pay it off, let them live there for a year. 
just like you would have had to wait it on your tax lien certificate buy. Um, wait there for a year and be able to resell the property for three, four, five times what I got it for. They're happy. And guys, when you make a deal with someone, you make a deal with someone. It's two adults making a deal. You're not taking advantage of somebody said yes. You're not. If they don't want to take it, go to the next one and see what you can do. You don't get caught up in trying to make everybody happy. You're responsible. It's like being a parent if you own a company. You're responsible for the people that are underneath you and for their welfare. You're responsible for that. You took on that responsibility when you became a business owner. And you need to put that first because you're not going to be able to help other people if you can't take care of your crew. Thanks. Have a great day.